Small town boys turned university football players turned recurring actors on a hit TV show. These two guys didn't know each other, but they had similar pads and now are such good friends that people are shipping them hashtag swangs. They play Sweet Pea and Fangs Fogarty on the hit TV show Riverdale and they came and talked to us about how they've navigated a career. A year ago, one of them was cashing in bottles to make ends meet, but by sticking to it and taking training and a little bit of luck, they are now in a position where they have small roles that have grown over the season. Uh, it's an insightful look on how you stay focused in this industry, especially at a young age. This is Drew Ray Tanner and Jordan Connor on Chaotic Creator. So here we are. We are hanging out at Daily Hive. I'm hanging out with Drew Tanner and Jordan Connor. Hey, what hey. up? They're, they're like ready to Hi. go. Hi. <laughs> have you guys done <laughs> a like podcast talk. before? Um, no. no. No, this is this your first is podcast. Our first, uh, first podcast. First time doing something together, too. Kind of oh, like really? this. Yeah, yeah. 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 What was it like when you guys met on set? Like, uh, was it you guys came in the same day for the fitting or? Uh, no, actually, um, I had been in an episode before Drew came onto the show. Oh. And, uh, and so we had, we'd filmed the first episode and then, um, and then, uh, the next one, we we're starting to shoot the next one and they were casting Drew's ca uh, character, Fangs Fogarty. And I looked, I wanted to know who was playing the character cause we were going to be friends on the show. And uh, I looked and I saw that it was Drew's name and we hadn't really known each other before then, but we'd auditioned against each other a whole ton. Yeah. Like we would audition against each other for everything and be like, he booked something, I booked something, he booked something. And then so, um, and then so when I found that out, I just went straight to his trailer and like was like knocking on the door <laughs> and I was like, Hey man, I'm Jordan. Like, <laughs> yeah, like the perfect welcome to, and, uh, it was one of those experiences where you see somebody on set that you relatively know from Vancouver, but you you really respect that person. You, so you see them and you're like, I'm so happy I get to work with this guy. Oh, you so know, there was no you, competition. There was like, that's that there was that took that role I wanted. Right. You know, that, I think that, that does exist, yeah. but it wasn't that case with Jordan. It was yeah. like, I was yeah. so happy that he had booked the part that he had got. Yeah. Um, you know, him coming and knocking on my door made me feel really welcome for my first day. And it was just like, dude, it's you. Yes. Like that was like the, a good feeling to have. He's sure. in love with me. Yeah. I am. It's a, it's a, it's a love relationship, you know. I, There's I always that. relationships on the show. They always wonder who's uh, who's yeah. who's in love with who. And now don't, we don't just start that. Don't that. start that. <laughs> we already have a a, a name trending. Druden? No, Druden. Druden. No, 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 that's not gonna happen. It's, I don't even Wait, know. Why, if I we, say why it. are we going down this road? Why right we, now? <laughs> stop you guys presented it. You presented yeah, it. I know. Yeah, uh, that's no, what idea. was the thing that's trending on? Uh, I don't know if it's trending, but like, there's a name that was being created. That I created actually. Oh, what I is think it? it's called Swangs. Swang, oh, which is sweet, sweet pea and fangs. Yeah, there you go. There go. You got it. So write that down. Uh, <laughs> I will write that. <laughs> I had a pen. I'd write it down. I don't know. So I'll just remember it. Hashtag Swangs. Um, when you talk about the community, uh, how, how was it on set? Vancouver actors versus actors who've come in from afar, because obviously there's lots of recognizable names on the older cast, and then uh, I guess the core. Uh, Archie characters are most of them aren't from here. I don't think anybody's from here. Um, they're uh, all brought in. No, yeah, most people, uh, mm -hmm. everyone's brought in uh, who's playing kind of the main cast. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think there is any kind of like us versus them or Canadians versus no. Americans. It's, it's no. like everyone's really nice and everyone is super collaborative and uh, and everyone's friends and it's great. And like all the directors and 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 producers and writers that come up from the show, they're so great and so kind to us. And like, we've just had, I've had nothing but like an incredible experience on set. Yeah. How often do you guys spend time with each other outside of, obviously there's a connection between you guys, but with the rest of the cast, do you guys hang out, spend time? I know I, that's when I first met you guys was an event and you were mm -hmm. with Lachlan and <laughs> Casey Cott. And so like, you know, characters who you never see together on the show, you guys are all hanging out, but does that happen often? Hanging out with the, the cast? I mean like the, the odd time, um, maybe like after, a day of filming or there's an event where we all might be going together like this yeah, yeah. and, and I mean, that kind of stuff for the most part everyone yeah. works like crazy hours yeah. like they work like 12 hour days and then and then go home and sleep and then get ready for the next day kind of thing but like mm -hmm. on the weekends too yeah on the weekends sometimes if like if they're not flying home we'll hang out it's yeah it's, and, and, and and keep in mind there's also a lot of downtime on set so you spend a lot of time getting to know everybody just being there right so you spend a whole day like 14 15 hours filming and you're there with each other i mean you know yeah, you kind of want some 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 time away anyways right right you'd like to hang out with them too but you see them so much when you're there yeah. right and it's all congested time but uh it's like yeah. hanging out with your colleagues they're nice and all but hey. <laughs> <laughs> the uh how did you guys get into this so you're from calgary 
You're from no, from Calgary. No, I'm from uh, Victoria. I was I was born in Victoria. Yeah, You're from I Calgary. was born in Calgary, but I moved I moved here when I was two years old. So, oh, so and, and same for here, me too. Yeah, okay, so you guys have been here for a while. How did you like get into this? Because how old are you? You're I'm 25. You're 25. I'm uh, 26. 26. Okay, so <clears> you guys are playing like a decade. <laughs> oh yeah, younger yeah. on the show. Uh, yeah. yeah, but you guys have like been around for a bit. Like, how long are you guys doing the acting thing for? I started uh, acting in TV and film when I was uh, 16. That's when I started auditioning. Oh, really? Yeah. I always How did. How did you get into it? How did I get into it? Like, um, did you tell your parents, like, I want to do this, and they got you the agent? Or were you like, I'm just going to call up agents? Like, I, were, I I actually had gotten – I was I played football. I was like an athlete, and so did Jordan. That's yeah, actually – we're both football players. We're both yeah. were football yeah. players, and we played against each other, which is – Oh, really? Kind of a weird yeah. coincidence. Yeah. yeah. What were the high, high schools school. you guys went to? Uh, I went to the Sand Secondary. In Shut Delta. up in North Delta. Yeah, in Delta. <laughs> Shut up. Where'd you go? I went to Burnsview. My sister went to Burnsview. I was in, <laughs> I went to Burnsview because I was in French immersion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I went to ND. Okay. Because back then, because yeah, yeah. I'm so goddamn old. Um, back then it used to be like junior high and then and high then school. ND was the high school. Yeah. Yeah. Now all the I think now everything's like, a high school. Yeah. yeah. Or whatever, oh, that's so crazy. Yeah, Were you crazy. in Fr- no Sands wasn't French immersion? No, 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 no. no, no so no, you just only speak English. Yeah. Sorry. Too bad. Yeah. What school did you go to? I went to W J Mullet in Abbotsford. That's where I, I graduated from, and I spent two years going to Aldergrove, the town that I grew up in. Okay. So, yeah. Aldergrove. Yeah. That sounds so fabled. Yeah. I don't even, I don't think I've ever been there. Aldergrove is in between away. Abbotsford and Langley. It's a small town. Oh. You would, and, and you would drive by it and not even know it was there. Oh, really? Um, but they film a lot there because it's like a, kind of got like a small town vibe to it. So right. they film, we filmed Riverdale there. We went to my old high school. We filmed an episode there. Yeah. That was really cool. So from these uh, smaller yeah. towns, well, Delta's not that small, but, you know, Aldergrove, how did you guys get into like I'm gonna get into acting. How did that work? Um, yeah, well, for me, it was basically like um, I had I had done I had always done <clears throat> theater in high school. I'd yeah. done all like my high school plays, um, but I also played played football as well. Yeah. And I ended up getting a scholarship to go play at UBC. Um, what so was your scholarship? I, uh, it was just it was just like um, like a, a full ride. It was a full <laughs> ride. It wasn't a full ride, but to play just to play football like it is how many ever many like games I dressed. I got I got a, a certain amount of money to my school. So oh, to really? my schooling, yeah. So I, I played football at UBC for for two years, and uh, at the end of my second year, I actually um, got tackled from behind and, and broke my tibia and fibula, my shin just snapped in half, oh. and it was kind of like the end of my football career. Shit. Did you like see it? Like no, out? the bone wasn't sticking. I was like really lucky, like, but my foot was like twisted all the way around. It was all crazy and nasty, oh. and uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, so after healing from that, I kind of decided that I wanted to get in, back into acting because I loved it in high school. Yeah. Um, and so when I was like 20 years old, I started taking at some theater classes and and, and doing that kind of so stuff. So you didn't take any theater classes at UBC. No, I didn't take any classes at UBC. Oh. No, I was taking like architecture at UBC because oh, I was like, I was kind of like, I was either going to do acting or was not going to do acting. Right. Um, so, and then I decided that, you know what, I was just going to follow my dream, do like become an actor. And where'd you take the classes? Here? Uh, yeah, I took classes at, uh, I first took them at, um, at uh, Ghost Studios, it's a studio just down on like uh, Quebec and East Third. But okay. then uh, I trained for five years at, at a studio called Railtown Actor Studio. Okay. And that's where I kind of like really grew and, and, uh, and uh, they work on a lot of theater and stuff like that, a lot of th- a lot of plays, mm. and uh, that's where I've done most of my training. And um, and yeah, so I've been auditioning for like five five six years since I was yeah since I was twenty. I had my first my agent, my first agent, mm. and uh, and yeah, and then it's just been like small gigs here and there, and then and then it was funny because I had auditioned for Riverdale probably like three or four times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really, what for different they? characters, <clears throat> I auditioned for Joaquin, I auditioned for Reggie, and like uh, and like none of them went through, and I was like getting bummed. And then I went in for this one, uh, and they they called it Applejack. The character's name was Applejack for the audition because it's being right. super secret. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so and so I went in for this audition, uh, and they had a scene from from episode four that I was auditioning for, and I come to the audition and I was like, oh, like I didn't book the last two. I don't know about this one. And then I get to the room and there was like 50 guys like well, waiting to audition. So they like, kind of look like you? No, they had like everybody. They had like oh, all really? different ethnicities, like ages, like young guys, old guys. I was like, it's like, okay, this is interesting. And I was the first person to go in. Yeah. And uh, I went in and I did it a few times. And then... Uh, Sean Cossey was the casting director? Yeah, it was okay. Sean Cossey. Yeah. And uh, he directed me a bitch. Uh, <laughs> Freudian slip. What Oops. did Sean do to you? He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. You're gonna edit that out. Okay. That was weird. He he directed me a bit. I'm gonna drink some. I'm gonna drink some tea right now. Wow, wow. that was great. That's good. That's a, that's a sound bite for this. No, yeah. no. He directed me a bit, and we got to a good place. And I said, and then when I was leaving the audition, I was like, I was like, is there gonna be callbacks? 
because I might be out of town. He's like, oh, they, they're not going to do callbacks for this character. They're just going to book off tape. And oh. I was like, okay. And then two days later, I found out I booked it. And then three days later, I was on my wardrobe. And then next week, I was on set. Yeah. So it was yeah. like, it was just like crazy, crazy yeah. fast that it, it, it kind of worked out. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's wow. kind of nuts. And how about your story then? My story? So I started getting into the business. Yeah, and then getting into I the business. The I, I kind of had always um, loved performing. I started when I was five or six with my grandfather he was a magician and uh we would do little performances for the family and that's so kind of how magic tricks i can do magic can tricks. you do a magic trick right now i brought some cards you did not i, I know did. yeah where yeah. are they they're down here where, i don't know what you're gesturing to they're, they're down they're down on the, on the ground yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the first magic trick <laughs> boom they appear can you tell we've never done an interview before all yeah. i can see is that he's looking at his crotch what are you talking about the Keep using your eyes; it'll take you there. Um, <laughs> no, no that's how that's how I started. Like yeah. that's where I got the bit by the whole performer bug. Yeah, and then a- ever since then, it was yeah, doing elementary school plays, doing high school theater, improv. Um, but I had a very similar story to to Jordan. I I played football, and that was my main goal. Yeah, and I had gotten a scholarship to the University of Manitoba. Oh, and I had started auditioning for commercials and stuff like that when I was yeah around 16, 17 years old. Yeah. Um, didn't book anything though, uh, and did a, I auditioned for a spring feature at our high school in my grade 12 year. And we ended up doing it for four weeks. And at the end of that, I decided that this was something that I really wanted to do and pursue outside. It was uh, the crucibles. I played John Proctor. Dead wow. ringer for John Proctor, right here. <laughs> I'm not yeah. familiar with the Crucible, but I about the Sa- it was a really white show. It was show. about the Salem rich, uh, witch trials. Oh. Yeah. Different from the Crucible. Or is it the same? Sorry, it was the same. Yeah, the Crucible. Yeah, not Crucibles. He, he's in the sequel. He the was in the Crucibles. The Crucibles. <laughs> they rewrote right. it. Like they made, kid, they made it a pop opera. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm allowed to have my, my flip up too here. Yeah. Don't listen you to had, it. You had, it's all good. You call Sean Cossie teaching you the bitch. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> starring in Crucibles, the musical. Anyway, yeah, the Crucible. That's what it was. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. So at the end of that, um, I decided that I wanted to uh, pursue acting. Um, you know, as a professional career. Mm-hmm. And so I called up the University of Manitoba and I said, hey, like, you know, thank you for the, the offer. And I, I said no to the scholarship. Um, I was actually, of, do they have an acting program there? Do you even know? I think they might have had some sort of a theater program. Yeah. Um, and you didn't consider it to be like, I'll go do football and theater? You know what? I, it was, you can't really do that, really. Like, it's time commitment. so time consuming. I see. Yeah, you're there. It really is. Like, and, and I think that's what took me away for, from it for a couple of those years there was uh, – you just don't have time when you're an, like a full-time athlete. Um, and uh, But I knew that it was kind of time. I just looked at my career as a football player, and I just didn't see the longevity there. Yeah. And I remembered the feeling of just being on stage and, and that feeling I had again when I was like a little kid again. And I was like, this is something I could do for a really long time. So I started auditioning that summer. I auditioned for a couple of years, didn't get a, a single part. And then right before my 19th birthday, I booked uh, – this um, hub network television show called Haunting Hour. Um, it was a spinoff of Goosebumps. Okay. Yeah, it was by the same author, R.L. Stein. And uh, I did that and kind of felt comfortable doing that. And then, and then that's kind of how all of this started happening. It just just continued to pursue it from there. And what was your Riverdale yeah. audition story of how you got the part? So I, it's funny, actually. I was approached by uh, the for the Riverdale show back in 2015 I, I sent in a tape as Jughead. So I read for Jughead. Um, back then, it was like in the conceptual stages. They, I don't think they were, they were going in a d- bunch of different directions. Yeah. Um, so I read for Jughead and then obviously didn't get that. Uh, and then when it came to casting out here, I, same thing. I read for Reggie twice. I read for uh, Applejack Sweet Pea. I read for that character. Mm. Um, yeah, I read for a bunch of parts. And then I was about to go in and read for a character named Nick St. Clair, who was in oh, yeah, yeah. the last couple episodes. Yeah. And so I had auditioned for I had auditioned, auditioned for Applejack or Sweet Pea, and then I had auditioned for Fangs. And, and then I was about to go in and read for Nick. And I, same thing, I was getting bummed out. I, I just kept on reading for the show, and not, nothing had seemed to stick. <clears throat> but I was, you know, I put it on my, like, you know, this is what I want, this is what I'm going after. And uh, my agent called me and she said, uh, hey, you know what, you, you, we're not gonna, they're not gonna see you for Nick St. Clair. And I said, oh, that, that sucks. And she said, well, because they, they've offered you the part of Fangs. Mm-hmm. I said, well, that's awesome. And it was actually the part that I had wanted more of the two. And, uh, and that's, that's how I found out, yeah. 
You've been on Arrow. You've been on Supergirl. You died both times. I did. You saw that? No, I, I died on Arrow. I died on Supernatural. Supernatural. And uh, Supergirl. I They're just died. like yeah. Drew Tanner, the guy we kill. Exactly, for the CW, yeah. Okay. So that doesn't mean we're going to see you die on Riverdale? Um, Spoiler alert. Yeah, I, um, I, let's hope not. There's nothing like that right now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I had a bad pattern for a while there of just dying on the CW. So then when I got this part, I was like, I better not die. Like, let's but just make sure. They got yeah. they, they to put all these know. characters in there because they got to kill all them. So Exactly, right? Yeah, they got to clean house somehow. One of the things I told uh, um, Ashley and the other girls who play the Pussycats, I'm like, you guys have been in the show for like a year and like Asha. I'm like, girl, you don't even get any lines. Mm. And you guys show up and you guys got like massive <laughs> oh. steez and storylines. Yeah. Well, I think, I think especially like the beginning of the second season, they really wanted to uh, develop the South Side and right. like the Serpents and FP's story. Yeah. And Jughead's story of becoming a Southside Serpent and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that was, I think, heavily focused on in the beginning of the second season. But you're going to see, you're probably going to see a lot more. Have they said anything why everybody in the Southside, um, other than Penny Peabody, are darker people? Uh, uh, yeah, there's a little that. bit of an explanation for that. Yeah, um, I, I what is that can't remember what episode it was. It was discussed. I think in, it was probably episode three or four. Three or four. Yeah, yeah Tony five. Topaz, played by uh, Vanessa Morgan, she um, her character describes our our people being descend descendants of a uh, of a native tribe of a native tribe um, that you know throughout the years had developed the ser the serpent gang. And that's what we're descendants of that. So yeah. that's kind of thinky why you see a little bit of the uh, the ethnic Side, makeup yeah. of that. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's yeah. not like they've said you know you're you're aboriginals, but there's there's just storylines that are yeah. assisting that that narrative. Right. So. Yeah. 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 Um, I want to go back to um, just like that the acting career and everything. So just on the UBC thing. So I went to UBC on a scholarship too, computer okay. science. Switched out, went into the theater, finished my degree there. Um, I feel that like. I would say never get a degree in theater. Instead, go study something else and then go take the classes on the side and then mm -hmm. go audition and do the work. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you guys recommend to people who want to get into this business? What would you say based on the successes you've had or the advice you've gotten from somebody else that you're like, maybe I should have done that? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I mean, yeah, it's, it's 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 always a different path for everybody for sure. sure. And I think, I think any program you do, whether it's like a theater program or if you go to classes... Uh, on part time, or you do like a conservatory or whatever. I think like with acting, the biggest thing is uh, is you're gonna get out of it as much as you put into it. Yeah. Because regardless of regardless of like who the teachers are or the coaches or whatever, like I think I think if you, the more work you put in as an actor and the more time you spend working on your craft, the no matter where you go, the better you're gonna be. Um, and I think yeah, I think um, there, there's not like one specific path that you can recommend to anybody. I think it's just like follow your passion and do what your passion. I, like. I think the thing I would I would ask that person is to just really have a conversation with themselves as to why they want to do it, hmm. and and make sure that they're doing it for the right reasons. And what and are the right reasons? I think the right reasons are I, I think a lot of people like the idea of something, mm -hmm. you know, and then. Um, I think what I would suggest is, yeah, get on stage, get, get into a theater production, yeah. get some, get your feet wet with story. Like, you know, do it for those reasons because you want to tell a story be a storyteller or be a part of something bigger than you. If you're doing it to just because it's trendy or it's something that is, is cool right now or in, or you just sort of thought it was a good idea. <clears throat> I don't know if I'd lend all my advice to that person, but if you really want to do it, join a class, you know, there's lots of classes in, uh, in Vancouver and there's like a community out here that's just dying for more people to join. So that's what I would do. I'd become part of the community. Um, you know, join a, yeah, join a class, get your feet wet with something, uh, <clears throat> performance based and see how you like it. And if you like it from there, you know, you spent 300 bucks to do a class for a month and that was that. And if, and if you know you like it, then you'll continue on and then you'll meet more people. Um, I think people get the idea that, you know, you kind of have to do this whole thing alone. You know, you have to get an agent, then you have to go to auditions and you have to, you know, you have to fight for yourself and, you know, have to be cutthroat. But if, uh, if I could have told myself any advice when I was 16, it would have been get into a class, meet more people like you. And uh, that's what I would have done. Yeah. In, in an industry where a lot of the stuff depends on other people giving permission to do the work, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to get cast, you've got to get that role. Uh, what would you guys recommend that people do other than the class to take control of your career? Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, like that's 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 a big thing in the film industry for sure. Is like is like you're auditioning and you're uh, and you have to get 
you have to get someone to you have to get someone to, you have to get a casting director to bring you in and then you have to get that casting director to send the tape to producers and directors and they got to choose you and that's like a big that's a big like so much of that does has nothing to do with you as a person yeah um, it has stuff to do with other cast members trying to fit a, like if they have trying to fit a family together if you don't look like the cast dad then you're not gonna right. get cast or like whatever um, but the biggest thing that I found personally was like you got to take your art into your own hands and like and right before I booked. Right before I booked Riverdale, I uh, I started a, a theater company with my friends, and uh, we started producing plays on our own. And I started writing a pilot with my other with another friend of mine uh, that we're going to be shooting in December. We're shooting our pilot, um, and so like that kind of stuff will help you, will keep your 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 mind busy and keep you your your uh, your artistry sharp and like working when you're not getting jobs on TV, when you're not when you're not getting seen by casting directors, when you're not. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when nobody's giving you an opportunity, you can make opportunities for yourself. And like filming your own stuff is super easy these days. Like a DSLR shoots 4K, like you can, they, and like you can get friends together, you can shoot whatever. Um, it, and like, it's not, it might not be the best thing, it might not be something that you ever show to anybody, but what it is, it's a learning experience that will help you grow into the next phase of your, in, of your career, of your acting. Um, Cause like personally, I found like even writing, like I started writing and I was like, I can I can see story so much different now mm-hmm. um, from when I was trying like when I write a pilot script and I'm like oh these are the way the character is going this is kind of the arc of the story when I look at an audition now I go okay this is kind of where in the story this is happening and I can kind of go from there and I, I can kind of glean more from the story than I thought I could than I could before yeah. I even started writing yeah I think the biggest thing kind of just what you're saying is is to not just get like suckered into one medium where you're only like you, you're all of a sudden you're your audition you're like audition crazy brain and that's all you're focusing on <clears throat> if you have other outlets and you have other other uh, ways to express your artistic creativity um like whether it be writing uh, uh, for me it's music you know like that's the stuff that kept me going mm-hmm. was being able to like stay stimulated with other with other forms you know um but yeah if you're just gonna be like to take control of your career in, in times where it's, it's down, that's what I would say. I'd say, yeah, pick up a, a camera, you know, in, invest in, you know, some sort of form that lends, because art's like that. It, 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 is, it goes in so many different directions, right? And there's so many other things that you can do with it um, other than just acting. And I think it all helps with that too. I think that'll like help your career. If you, like, like Jordan said, if you have a perspective on writing, it'll help mm-hmm. you look at a character different. Whereas if you just focused on just the lines on the page in an audition room, I mean, you might not, uh, you might not get that perspective. Um, if you learn music and you understand how music lends itself to uh, to cinema, and anytime you watch a movie and how much the the, the soundtrack, like Baby Driver, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. there was a whole mm-hmm. department there putting together a, a soundtrack for Baby Driver, and it totally made the, made movie. the movie. Yeah, right. So if you invest yourself a little bit in that, in the times that are down, and, and try and like focus on the bigger picture, I think it'll help you um, stay focused and, and kind of get you on the right path. I think in those times of downtime. What yeah. are your thoughts on getting paid while you're doing this kind of stuff? You know, when you're making the art for the art, the sake of art, for stoking the the flames of creativity, you still got to pay the bills. What would you recommend to people um. for that? <laughs> like what kind of job? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think. Or what uh, have you guys done? To- I think I think Jordan probably had the best gig. Um, I think working in casting was probably a, a yeah. I've known a lot sure. of people that work yeah. in casting, and like I didn't find out about that until this year that that would that could be a real thing, and I think that would be an awesome job. Yeah, to I do. mean, I mean, like I've done a ton of different jobs. Like I've served, I've bartended, mm-hmm. I've bus tables, I've I've like didn't done like marketing jobs. Uh, uh, like I had a full time marketing job for a bit there, and like and like all this kind of stuff. And but yeah, when I found like I think yeah, one of the best one of the best jobs I have had and I've been really lucky to have is a job in casting. Um, and I do, I work camera, I'm a reader and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And like the ability, the, the opportunity that gives you to kind of see behind the scenes, behind a camera of like every day of what kind of, what, what works, what, what doesn't work, what's too much, what's not enough. Like, um, what's actually coming across on, on camera that's, that's effective to an audience and stuff like that. And it's been really helpful to just kind of see, see, you see tons of actors come in every day, uh, like lay their hearts on the table, do their work, uh, do their mm-hmm. work in the room, and then they go, and then you kind of see what directors think and what the producers think, and all the behind the scenes kind of stuff that goes on in a room when they're choosing their cast. It helps you really put things into perspective of of how 
of how much you your your audition can can be a part of be a part of the decision and how much it can't like how much it, it has not has nothing to do with you yeah and you could be on the table as a choice for her for the whole entire day but like at the end of the day when they move someone else over here and then they take you out and you're just off the table and it's just like you have no control right yeah on uh, this home stretch here, I have a bunch of questions here about inspiration and what you guys look to. Um, perhaps we can like rapid fire it mm-hmm. unless it warrants a deep dive, but I'm going to throw them out here and let me know what you guys <laughs> think. Um, breakdowns and breakthroughs. When have you uh, had a moment where you're like, I hit rock bottom or what I perceive to be rock bottom and it actually changed you guys for the better? Yeah. Uh, a moment like that? One year ago, almost exactly a year ago, um, I yeah didn't have a job, didn't have a car. I was busing everywhere. Um, taking bottles to the bottle depot, um, hadn't booked a part in a long time, um, really felt like I was at rock bottom. And I took a, I, I had a motorcycle at the time, I packed it up and I took a two week uh, road trip down through uh, Western America, came back really broke, had nothing but gained a lot of perspective, kind of hit, hit the lowest part. And then it totally changed me for the better because I got on the right track. Just being on the road for two weeks and like hand in, like handling little rudimentary tr- tasks kind of put my mind frame into the back, you know, back into where it needed to be. Um, but that was yeah, a year ago. That was where yeah. that was where that was that for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, for me probably almost a year ago. Last pilot, last pilot season, I had been. Um, I've been auditioning for a whole bunch of stuff. I'd, I'd been put on shortlisted for like three pilots and like a bunch of different characters on the show, and then. And they kept bringing me back for auditions and I had been I'd been on hold for like a project shooting in Paris and like all this crazy stuff and then I got none of it at the end of pilot season and I didn't have a job and I was kind of pretty felt pretty down on myself that I wasn't getting anything um, and it was kind of this turning point for me where I figured you know what it's either it's either like nobody wants me and I quit now or I don't give up and I keep trying as hard as I can and working my butt off until I, something does come. And then four months later I booked Riverdale. So it was like, it, that was a big turning point for me where it was like either, it was like kind of a fork in ro- the road. Either you keep going down this path of like mediocrity or you step up your game and, and work as hard as you ever have to get what you want. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's, I think that's a big turning point for a lot of people where, where you, you, you finally say enough is enough. I'm not, I'm not giving up and you just, you just go until you can't, I think it's more. easy to get comfortable too. I think oh, for that's, sure. I think it's easy to get comfortable to hear hearing the nose, you know, mm-hmm. having things happen, having things slip away from you. I think it's easy to just like get comfortable in that, and then you just get to a point where you look you look around and you go, either I'm going to make something of myself now and do it, or it's never going to happen. Yeah. You know, and you got to tell yourself every time they say no, it's like no matter what, you just keep. I'm going to go to the next one with my whole heart. I'm going to go to the next one with my whole heart. If they crush it, I'm going to bring it back to the next Mm -hmm. one with my whole heart, crush it. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as long as you're, as long as you're willing is big. And that comes from, I think that comes from the, what we talked about before is, is the, like the reason why you do it. And the reason why you do it is because of passion and and love for it instead of money Mm -hmm. or fame or whatever. I love that you brought it back to that because I think about that too. You know, like like I said, I have a theater degree and I realized I never really wanted to be an actor. My, like my strength is in directing and producing and, talking to actors and even when you say that i'm like yeah anytime my agent sends me out for something I'm like i don't really want to do mm. this you know yeah it's like yeah i can play a reporter but sure. i don't really care and so hearing you guys talk about the passion i think sometimes it's cliche and i think it's obviously we're talking to you guys because you're on a tv show and people recognize you guys from that tv show uh, there's actors out there who haven't had that hit that 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 mm-hmm. chance yet but i think going back to the idea of doing it because you love it because mm-hmm. you want to that will drive you through and even for me when you said that like i kind of I felt it, you know, when you get those feels, like when you're yeah. telling us, yeah. I felt it. And I'm like, yeah, just keep doing that thing that you want to do and uh, build on that. But then I guess my last question is here, in moments of overwhelm or unfocusedness, if that's a word, where do you find that? Get grounded and get clear to do the work that you uh, want to do and you should do to get yeah. to the next level. I got a really good piece of advice um, a few years ago. I was taking class and I, I had a scene partner um, who had been uh, acting and directing for like 20, 30 years. He'd been doing it for a long time. And we, I'd always go to him to work on auditions and, and uh, just talk about life and acting and stuff like that. And he gave me a really good piece of advice. Um, so, you know, in times of being overwhelmed, um, he would say to me, you know, don't forget to bring or have a conversation with your five-year-old self 
or if it's somebody else that 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 version of you that first wanted to start this mm. always before you go in the room before you go read for a part before you you know accept an offer to always have a conversation with with that five-year-old self for me um, and bring him into the room with you and ask him his perspective on it because he'll probably be so amazed at where you are and he probably won't care about the politics he probably won't care about all of the, the other little things behind the scene so remind yourself of of why it's in, it's important and always don't forget him because yeah. that's the reason why he started this that's that's what i do i have a little conversation with my little five-year-old self yeah in the audition room yeah <laughs> Absolutely. Like if I, if I'm worried or if I'm nervous, like I'll just I'll look over. Yeah, they're like this guy is. Just say the lines, bro. Just say to? the yeah, lines. Yeah. <laughs> I just need a minute with my five year old self, please. Uh, <laughs> oh they're like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> like, don't bring him back. Um, yeah, it, 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 if in times of uh, when you're unfocused and uh, overwhelmed, um, I think probably like the biggest time was right before my first day on set of Riverdale. I was kind of like. I'd known my character was going to be a bit more than one episode and I didn't know it was going to be what it is now. And, and I've got nine now it's crazy. And, and, uh, and so I was really nervous. I was so nervous and I, I, I'd been on, I'd been on plenty of sets before, but this one was felt kind of different. Um, and I did not know what I was going to do. I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to screw up on my first day. Like everything's going to be awful. And I didn't, and I had, I realized kind of like, three two three days before my i was supposed to be on set i was like like what am i doing like just calm down take a breath and i went back to um i went back to my training and i went to i went back to railtown actor studio and i sat down and i audited a class and i sat down in a chair and did my did my vo vocal warm-up and my and my and my warm-up and 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 i grounded myself and i was like okay time to work and it was that moment where mm. it's just like where it's just like go back to something that makes you feel like like I, I always feel like I belong in the theater. Like since I was a kid, I've always been like, the, like a theater is a place where I belong. And so for me, it was like I'm freaking out about my my being on set, uh, about coming to this new show, and uh, I just went back to the theater and did what I always had done when I feel like I was doing good work, when I feel like I was mm -hmm. pre being preparing myself. I went back to the theater and I did, I did what I did my vo vocal warm up and I ran my lines with my acting coach and and. And then I got, and then I got to a place where I was like, okay, now I can tackle this beast. Now I can go in and I can, I can do all the work that I want to do, come up with all my backstory, come up with all this, all my intentions and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't go back, calm myself down, and take myself back to where I needed to go, uh, needed to be to to feel like I could, I could work. You know what I mean? I guess I should have asked you guys this earlier in the interview. Um, but is there something that you could recommend us to uh, that you look to? for inspiration, be it a book, be it a movie, a television show, or even music? Inspiration. That influences your work, that inspires you to do better, to do different. Hmm. What do you I, think? I would say, I mean, there's one book that I always go to um, that's like a Bible to me. Uh, is Larry Moss's um, Oh, the Intent, Intent to, to Live. Live. Yeah, great book. Um, and that was like one of the first books I was ever introduced to on acting. And uh, yeah, I'll always recommend that book to anybody because I'll read it again and again and I'll always find something new. And it's really, it's a really simple like, I wouldn't say it's simple. It, I, I wouldn't say it's not easy, but it's a simple layout for how to start thinking about your character. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then what, another thing that I always, that I, that's in the book that like really, really gets to me is Whenever I'm working on a new character, the first thing I'll always do is figure out what that character wants in words that affect me as Jordan. Hmm. So like, so like I'll I'll think of how, like instead of figuring out your your character's wants and needs just solely on what they are or just saying them in any old way, I'll say them. I'll I'll find a way to say them that that pulls at Jordan's heartstrings and I'm, and then I'll go like, yeah, I really care about this person. I want to fight for this person. I, I know what this person's life is like, mm -hmm. and that will help me get into a character and really be able to live the life that they live because I'll, I'll, I'll care about it myself. Yeah. Things that inspire me too. Like, uh, I remember this, if, yeah, if I'm ever trying to look for some inspiration or, you know, we talk about times of being down. Um, one thing I used to always do is I would watch an episode of, uh, inside the actor studio. I know that seems mm -hmm. like really uh, cliche maybe, but like watching an episode of that and seeing, because they pan to the audience quite often and you see a lot of faces that remind you of yourself and you are like, you know, an audience member when you watch those episodes 
and and you just hear um, actors talk about acting and it's in it's in a lot of times it's in such a healthy way um, and you they talk about their stories and I, that's what I would do for inspiration I'd like just watch an episode of that that would always make me feel better yeah mm. Listening to actors talking about acting is a way that they refocus and re-energize. How do you get re-inspired? Let us know in the review or in a comment. And if you want to learn more about performing artists making it in the entertainment industry, subscribe to Chaotic Creative.